Hello, my name is Kelly McGowan, and I am a field specialist in horticulture for University of Missouri Extension. Today, I'm going to give you a little bit of an update on our lavender research project and what we have learned so far. So if you're not familiar with our lavender research project, uh, this was a project that was funded with a grant from the Missouri Department of Agriculture's a specialty crop block grant program. It was began or the, the project began in 2021 and will continue through September of 2023. We have four planting sites around the state of Missouri, one in Kirksville, Missouri, one in St. Genevieve, one in Springfield, and one in Mount Vernon, Missouri. And these all represent different types of geographical and climate types around the state. We are experimenting with six main types, and these include Dutch Mill, Grosso, Munstead, Hidcoat, Phenomenal, and Provence. All of these have done well in our last two years of research, and we would certainly recommend them for future plantings. So these are some photos of the high tunnel planting at the University of Missouri Research Farm in Mount Vernon. This is a high tunnel where we had had previous tomato research for the last couple of years, and it was time to do a uh, crop rotation. So we planted lavender in there, and the photo on the left is at the time of planting. So you can see they were pretty small plants. And then the photo on the right was taken recently. So they have done really well this year. Uh, we do now have the cover on the high tunnel. And lavender is very finicky about too much water, about saturated soils. So hopefully being able to plant it in a protected structure will help with excessive rainfall. And we might see some more plant survival that, that, than we would in just a field planting. So some things that we've learned this year include to plant on raised rows at least 12 inches in height. And that is because, once again, lavender does not like saturated soils. It has to have well-drained soil. And planting on a raised row can help with soil drainage. Another thing that can be done is you can plant in raised beds or in large containers. It works well in both of those also. Plan on plant loss each year. And this is especially true for some of our commercial lavender producers. We are getting reports of maybe 20 to 25% plant loss every year. Of course, this is very weather dependent, but Growers do lose plants and many are learning to propagate their own plants so that they will have a constant backup crop ready if they do lose plants. So plan on that plant loss, learn to propagate plants and have your own black backup plants ready. Another thing that we've really learned is that every site is different. And that's even true if you live in the same town. If you live in the same town, there are there's variances in microclimates, in soil types, things like that. So we are encouraging all of our growers, whether they're commercial or whether they're homeowners, to experiment with different cultivars. You may find a type that does really well on your property that it might not do so well for someone else. So don't just stick with one or two types, stick with several different cultivars and find one that does well for you and that is happy on your site. We also need resources to connect growers with buyers and vice versa. We know that there's demand out there. We know that there's people growing the plants and we're still lacking in resources to connect those two. So hopefully we'll find ways to do that going forward. And also going forward, we need to do more economic studies to find out things like how much does it cost to get a lavender operation up and going? What is the annual economic needs to keep that operation going? Just things like that. We need to be able to give potential growers more decision making tools if they want to grow lavender in a commercial setting. 
So we've had a lot of questions about winter protection. Now, at the start of this project, a lot of research was done and we visited a lot with growers. Some growers left their plants to the elements in the winter, some covered them. So we wanted to do a little bit of each to see what does well here in Missouri. Another interesting part of our research this year was adding distilling demonstrations to our workshops. A lot of growers that grow lavender are very interested in distilling because the essential oil that comes from fresh lavender flowers can be used to make a lot of different types of products or the oil can be sold on its own. It is a very high value product. People want to learn how to do it. And while distilling isn't hard, there is a bit of a learning curve. So being able to add the distiller demonstration at some of our workshops was very helpful to give people a general idea of how the process works, to talk a little bit about different types of equipment, how much time, how much plant material is needed, things like that. So this was a really interesting part of the project, one that we will continue to experiment with, it, with next year and also do some, some demonstrations. So we had three statewide workshops in 2022. One was in Kirksville, one was in St. Genevieve, and one was in Springfield. These workshops were very popular, they were very well attended, and these workshops were really a mix of home gardeners wanting to know more about growing lavender and also people that were already growing lavender commercially and also a lot of people who were interested in growing lavender commercially but just wanted to learn a little bit more about it. And so it was nice to get out around the state and meet with some of these people and take some of our research information out to the different parts of the state as well. So if, if you're not on our sign up list for these workshops, um, I will put my contact information at the end of this presentation and just reach out to me and I can add you to the list. So an unexpected thing that we had happen this year was volunteer plants. And some of you may be familiar with volunteer plants. Uh, cherry tomatoes are pretty common to, to send up volunteer plants, uh, zinnias, marigolds, some other types of annual flowers will often drop their seeds. And as a result, you have new plants starting to grow that you weren't expecting. And our research team, we had never really heard about volunteer lavender plants before, but as we got into this year, into 2020, 2022, into our second year of growing, we started to notice these little plants coming up in the pathways of our research plots. And we did inspect these a little further to make sure that they weren't just offshoots from the root system of the parent plant, and they weren't. They were independent, standalone plants. Uh, we want to do a little bit more research and see, um, you know, how long these plants survive. Will, be, will we be able to tell what cultivar they are since there's a lot of cultivars in these plantings? Um, just things like that. It was kind of an interesting development. So um, hopefully we can learn a little bit more about these going forward. So we had a lot of questions this year about how the drought had affected our lavender research. And again, lavender is a plant that likes hot and dry. So it actually did pretty good this year. Um, I dare to say that it even thrived a little bit during the hot and drought conditions. Now, here's some photos taken at the Springfield site. And you can, you can kind of see in the picture there that the plants did pretty good. We didn't lose very many plants. We had a lot of good flower production. Now, our research plants are two-year-old plants, so they're not fully established yet. Uh, they are still growing. They're kind of in their teenager stage right now. And so we did provide supplemental water, supplemental irrigation during some of the hot, dry parts of the summer. Now, we didn't overwater, um, but we did water about three times a week for a couple of hours. And this is just a very slow drip irrigation watering that we did on these plants. And again, they did really well. They thrived. They grew. They had a lot of good flower production. 
And so that is a good thing, you know, going forward. Are we going to have more hot, dry summers? Is lavender a good crop that isn't going to need excessive water to have good production? So um, this was a really positive outcome, and we'll see what happens going into next year. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're growing lavender commercially, it is important to be, you know, keep in mind that you will likely lose some plants for various reasons. And so learn to propagate your own plants, okay? And I won't read through all of this, but this is just a basic overview of how you propagate lavender. It's pretty easy to do. One of our team members, Donna Oftenberg, uh, this has kind of been her part of the project and she has been doing a lot of experimenting with propagating lavender because this is gonna be an important thing for our commercial producers to learn how to do going forward. Lavender plants can be pretty expensive. They can sometimes be tough to, to source, to find. So having a backup supply of our own plants is a good thing. And again, it's not that hard of a, a, a process. And I just encourage people to experiment with propagating their own plants. And just another side note on propagating plants, do keep in mind that some cultivars such as phenomenal and sensational are a trademarked cultivar, so it is illegal to propagate plants for, from those. So just be aware of the type of plants you are propagating uh, before you start that process. So just to kind of wind things up, as we go into 2023, we, myself and the research team, will continue to take data at all four sites, uh, data on growth, on insects and diseases, on flower production, uh, just general things like that will continue through next year. And one of the ultimate goals of this project all along has been to put together grower guides specific to the state of Missouri. So hopefully after we get our 2023 data and we can start compiling some of those numbers, we can start to work on those growing guides and really help people out that want to learn more about growing this plant. So this is my contact information. Um, I'm located in Springfield, Missouri at the Greene County Extension Office. Um, the office is located at the Springfield Botanical Gardens. Um, reach out to me if you wanna be added to our contact list. Reach out to me if you have more questions about growing lavender or wanna share some of your experiences. One of the goals of this project has been for uh, the research team and I to meet people who are growing lavender across the state because we want to be able to learn from you as well. So reach out to me if you have any questions and um, hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.